What's up, everybody? So I have, uh, I've had some very, very powerful experiences in the last couple of days. Been going through depression, but yesterday, uh, or two days ago, I went to a meeting and it was on God. And it seems like every meeting that I've been to for like the last week has been focused on God and just the difficulty that so many people that struggle with addiction have in accepting a God or acknowledging that there's a higher power. Uh, and as I was, as I was sitting, as, as I left, as I left this meeting, actually, I started thinking to myself and I sent my dad a text like, it is amazing how the the extent that God goes to to reach every single one of his children every single person those that have just feel like they're completely hopeless and are just angry and how could there be a God that would allow me to suffer so much a typical recovering addict's thought somebody that struggled with addiction for their entire life 30 40 50 years uh, they just have a we I haven't but addicts just have a really hard time acknowledging that there would be a loving higher power a God that um, that would allow the type of suffering that an addict goes through which We've said so many times everybody struggles with some th some type of addiction. Most people do. But uh, I realized it, he reaches into places like AA and NA and CA and Overeaters and all the different anonymous and the um, the lengths that God goes to to reach every single one of His children is just absolutely amazing to me. And yesterday, as I was listening to some podcasts and I ended up reading pretty much all of the letters of Paul, James, Timothy, I uh, didn't read Revelations or the uh, Acts or the, uh, the first four books, um, but I mean, I, I just couldn't stop reading and what set it off was this guy that does some podcasts and he really went deep into what happened to Paul and how everything that he had done his entire life, I mean, he had reached out and set up like 90 basically churches. Um, it was one church, but 90 different areas with bishops or elders, they called them, which translated as bishop. Um, and every single one of them, except for one, Timothy, went against him in the end. I mean, he worked his entire life to gather these people and to just teach them and embrace them. And there's Paul in the end, I guess he was in house arrest in Rome and he knows that the end's coming. He knows he's going to be killed. And he said, I have worked my entire life. I've done everything I can. Um, and he never forsook, never forsook his faith. But as I was reading that, I just, I realized how amazing I, I was looking at technology and it's amazing the reach of technology and how technology is able to reach all the ends of the earth everywhere in the world technology can reach and the message of Jesus Christ can be can be found anywhere in the world today um, I mean if a person's really seeking for it even in countries that uh, prohibit the stuff it, he can be found anywhere in the world and it was just amazing to me to to read the pretty much the entire New Testament and which I had already read um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John just a couple weeks ago, so and Acts. So I'd started after that. But um 
the love that God has for us is absolutely amazing to me. I, I had this depression lifted off of me and I just, why haven't I been reading more? Why haven't I been praying more? Just, you know, uh, and I understand what's going on. It's a, it's a process of recovery, you know, uh, but to see the extent that God goes to, to bring happiness into our lives, it's just so amazing. So amazing to me. It's so interesting to me the way that that our thoughts and things that we're experiencing are so aligned with one another. Like you mentioned talking about love and over the past few days I've been struggling so bad with oh, I don't know what's coming up. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I've been struggling really bad with migrant with just pain, with so much pain in my in my head and in my eyes like you probably see me squinting because the light is just hurting my head but but as as I've been in this place of pain and and experiencing it within my body last night I was just well last few days like I said I've just been thinking so much about love and about how I want to be a vessel more love for other people um, and I recognize that I need to be that more towards myself and last night as I was as I was thinking and, and just kind of like feeling kind of where I was just like I hope I can express this I hope it comes out I was feeling so much like we truly are like vessels for God to to be love and to bring love into this world and so many times like throughout our lives from the time that we're little children until where we are today like we have so many experiences that bring pain into our bodies and into our lives and into our hearts and our minds and 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 it gets stuck it gets trapped like we've we've talked about it in many other episodes and so last night as i was i was thinking like i just want to be love and and i was asking i was asking god like show me i'm i'm constantly asking him to show me where i need to change and and what i need to do differently and so i was you know just asking like where in my body do I not have love? Like where, I don't know why my car's doing that. Where in my body am I not feeling love? And, and I kind of like started at my feet, like where, and it may sound kind of weird, but I don't know. I mean, if, if you really like sit in meditation and really bring your attention to your body and and really go through and I just started with my feet like where in my feet do I not feel love and like I have feet issues and so I'm like feeling my feet and feeling my toes and everything and and I felt pain and and then I thought well where in my feet do I feel love because a lot of times if we feel our body parts you know it's like we can feel pleasure we can feel love we can feel like it feels good and then again I asked myself again where do I not feel love and it was so interesting because then as my mind shifted to not feeling love I felt really where I have pain in my feet and I was like okay how okay this is interesting <laughs> it was just really interesting um and I did that like up my legs and and I could just feel like I could feel where I have pain within my body and I haven't come to a to a total understanding of the body mind emotion like I, I haven't come to a full understanding of how all of that works together but I know that it does you know and I know that there are places within my body that I'm holding on to things that are not love and that they keep me from having full love for myself you know things that I judge about myself um 
and then so then it, it blocks me it blocks me from being able to to love others fully and so it's just really interesting to sit with myself and to like truly feel these different parts of my body like you know I I can think about like body image and you know dealing with like we've talked about before, um, like anorexia and, and things like that, like just not liking how certain parts of my body looks, you know, I mean, that is not having love for my body. So how can I learn to love those things about myself so that I can love them for, in other people? Um, and that's just like one little tiny thread, little aspect of, of love. Like love is so huge. Love is such a topic that is just on every level. Like love is truly like everything. It's the answer to everything. And as I ponder and I think about it, like I'm so grateful for... Jesus Christ like he is my example like he is the person that I look to to learn and to grow and to become more like and there's so many great people out there that that have that emulate Jesus Christ I mean truly because he just is the one he, he just he really is um I don't know do you have any thoughts yeah, about it if we uh I was listening to something recently, and it's I mean, love. If we love, we are we are being in alignment with God because God is love. I mean, love is everything. It is, uh, and I mean that that just goes back to yeah. There are so many things trapped in our body and stretching, deep stretch meditation. I mean it's yoga is such a great way to release it and the further you get into it and the more you do it the more it releases and I've been getting back into the yoga it is so healthy for the body uh, but my the the things that I saw in my mind yesterday I mean just as you got in you said what do you want to talk about and I said love and you just kind of laughed I knew immediately that you were on the same page. Um, and it is awesome how the spirit works that way. But the, I know that, I know that our podcast that will continue to focus a lot on the 12 steps and recovery and addiction, because it's just such a big part of our lives. But really my Jesus Christ really is everything to me. Love, I mean, he is. You can replace his name as love. I mean, you really can. You can just say love, and that is who he is. That's what he represented. That's all that he... I mean, for anybody to... Nobody can say anything bad about Jesus. I mean, even if you don't believe in him... I mean, he was just a good person. If you don't believe in him, he was a really good man that walked the earth that I believe was God in the flesh and died for me. And no greater love hath any man than to lay down his life for another. And um, as, I, as I was in the New Testament yesterday... What kept coming to me was just how much love God has for us. It is so laid out. If you go and look and just search the New Testament and see everything that Paul did in building up Jesus' church, and he knew in the end that that he knew the plan that our Heavenly Father had to send this message to the entire world. He understood that the church was collapsing around him. That all the work he had done, he didn't even get to die before it collapsed. I mean, he had to actually live and see it. And how much pain, that, I mean, he expresses it. His The pain that he felt and he had been abandoned by... I can't remember their names. I mean, there's so many just weird names. 
But um, he had one person left that he could send um, to the people, uh, to one of the churches. And it was Timothy, his beloved, his brother. And, you know, as, as I read the New Testament, I'm able to see how Heavenly Father, how our higher power, how God was preparing the world to really reach everybody, to reach the entire world. And it is so plain for me to see that he was preparing the church for, for today, for these times. And I look at technology and the way that it reaches the entire world, and there is so much. The opposition is going to use the same tools that the that goodness is going to use. I mean, you can just see it. Like, pornography is just, I mean, the biggest industry in the world. Um, I don't even want to talk about some of this stuff that that goes on on the internet. I mean, it's, it is just a sick, sick place. But there is so much good. The... Uh, the, the way that we're able to connect the genealogies and our, our ancestries and the passion that so many people in the world have today for researching their ancestors that they don't even know why. Mm -hmm. There's just this desire that people have to know where they come from. And I call it the spirit of Elijah. You can find it in the Old Testament. Um... It is, it's so plain for me to see the love that God has for his children and how he wants his, his message, the message of our Savior Jesus Christ to reach all ends of the earth. And I mean, he knew what technology would do. He knew what he was opening up whenever he inspired some man. I mean, we think we're so smart we think we create these things that we create this technology but it's given to us so that God's plan can move forward and the the adversary is using it just the same and so it's uh, God knew that God knew what he was opening up but with good, I mean, there is an opposite opposition in all things. There has to be. It's just the way that science works. I mean, there, it's just the way that the laws of nature. Um, but it, it's just last night. It was so plain for me to just I, the feeling that I had. I just realized what? Why am I depressed? And I and I actually we talked about this before enjoying depression. Yesterday I was working and I was like, I'm enjoying my depression today. <laughs> and it's such a strange thing to say, but you know, so what? So I have a season of depression and I'm going to get through it mm -hmm. and it's going to be okay. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to have the crazy thoughts that I have. They're going to subside and I'm going to get healthier and healthier and life is good. You know, and and it's because I'm giving it back. I'm give, giving it to to God. I don't want to control things. I don't want it. It's too much. I mean, I know I can't, but when I want to and I try to, it's just too much. Too much of a burden to try and control all this chaos. <laughs> to think we have any control of any of it. I mean, that's brought me back to Paul. I mean, he knew. He doesn't have any control over that, but he knew the bigger plan. He knew, he knew what God was setting up, and it uh, it is so plain and obvious to see in the New Testament the collapse and the need for Jesus Christ's church to be restored. Um, and I could go on to that for a long time. <laughs>
It's there are so many good Christian people, so many good Muslim people, so many good Buddhist, Tao, so many just good people in this world that are all seeking the same thing. They're all seeking love, and they want we as a people uh, just want peace, just want love. But you've got powers and those that are in control of this this world that seek land, seek uh, riches, seek money, seek power, and then you've got all of us that just want peace and love. I don't know, it's a, it is a crazy time to live in, but there's more good in the world today than there's ever been, and hence there's more evil than there's ever been. It's amazing, it's an amazing dichotomy. I love the simplicity too of it. So like simple. God's plan really is just so simple. It's just it's about just love, like truly. Mm. And and when you when you're in that state of mind, like you just want love. Like every choice that we make is really truly bringing us more love and light and goodness or it's bringing us into darkness and and it's bringing us away from love i mean truly down to the just the simplest little choices that we make every single day are we loving ourselves when we're making this choice are we loving others when we're making this choice and and that's just it's a really great way to to make choices throughout our lives it's kind of that you know I talk a lot about making 10 choice, choices like that are number 10s and, and that really that is in that state of love. It's, it's what's expanding us and making us bigger and better and more for God to use to, to bring more light into this world, to shine light on all of the dark areas in ourselves and in others. And as we ask you know, as we ask for help, if we really truly want to be this way, like he really, he just shows us. He he brings us through like the depression, whatever it is you're experiencing. It's like he, he brings us through these dark periods. Like having all this happening with me, with my head and just feeling pain. It's like I, I tend to sometimes like really want to fight it and just... I tend to make it worse whenever I do that. But whenever we just relax into whatever it is that we are experiencing and going through, God is able to bring us through it. And he's able to show us, show us what is within ourselves that we need to change. Um, and a lot of the time it is control, like just trying to control something within our lives. But if we can just learn to love like it really and I'm so grateful that I was born into this world with parents that taught me the love of Jesus Christ that taught me about him and about his life and about who he is and just everything that he is is just love and you know if you want to be a more loving person like he he is a great person to study. He's someone that, you know, to, and, and not even, you don't even necessarily, if the, I was thinking about this, this is something else I was thinking about yesterday is that if you just say the word Christ, you know, and you just like sit and you just feel into Christ and who he is and just his essence and how he feels and just the word Christ it just sounds like crystalline and like crystal and um, just a clear like it feels like so much love it just feels so pure and if you were to just sit and to to really think I mean you don't even have to read anything or anything I mean, if you sit in that feeling and just ask to receive and to understand and to feel like you will feel his love I mean because if we're asking God is going to give especially if we're asking to feel Christ 
to feel him in our lives and to feel him in our heart. And it has nothing to do with religion. Like people get so triggered when they hear Jesus because they think of religion and they think of all the wars and they think of all of this horrible stuff that has happened in the name of religion. But Jesus Christ is not religion. Jesus Christ is love. Like he is the power that flows through us to make a difference and to change this world. Um, he did set up a religion. He did set up his church to, to fill the earth, to spread his name, to, to share, to uplift, to build, to edify, to do all of those things that is spoken of in the scriptures that, that help us to become better people. Um, but a lot of times, you know, people are just so hurt by people in church. And so they, they lump it all together and they throw everything out. They throw the baby out with the bathwater. They just get rid of all of it. And they let go of, of what is most important and it is love. And that is Jesus Christ. He is love. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you can go into so many of the mystical... Um, mystical beliefs today and they most of them embrace Christ a Christ consciousness Christ, the chrism the Christus they, they can call him many different things and but they're talking about Christ a lot of uh, a lot of them are seeing how Christ is within our body and the way that he is part of us um I mean, it's, it, Christ is embraced, the word Christ is embraced by so many mystical beliefs that that really amazes me as I've gotten into a lot of that stuff. Um, <clears throat> and it's so interesting. I mean, it's so real. It's, it, it's just another way of Christ expressing love. It really is. And... It's another way that God is just reaching people that have been damaged, have been just experienced so much trauma that they have a really hard time believing in religion or believing in any religion or any. And so they take a different path, but they're still finding Christ in the most random places. They're still coming across that name and it's amazing it's just love it's uh his name is flooding the entire earth it is it is flooding the entire world and i don't i don't have any doubt in me that everybody's going to be okay we're all we're all going to be okay no matter how angry you are um how could God let this be, happen to me? Why have I had to suffer so much? It's because I'm, I'm able to grow. I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing things that I wouldn't have been able to experience otherwise. And I mean, it is so simple. And to, to, to me, in my mind, the plan that God has for all, all of his children is so simple and so easy to see but we just want to make it so complicated and ask all these questions of why would God well God didn't do that man did that thousands of uh, from the time Christ was alive until after the dark ages I mean there were wars fought there were people tortured there were witches killed there were tons of people murdered slain in the name of Christ in his name men did these things men that were just confused and they were doing it with in their heart a righteous purpose it's chaotic I mean it's it's crazy but it doesn't take away from who Christ is it doesn't change anything about him just because men are imperfect and do these things. And, you know, I was listening to uh, to somebody earlier about the early days of 
the church that I, that we go to, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, or the Mormon Church, whatever you want to call it, um, and the apologetic attitude that people are taking on. He said, "I won't. I'm not. I'm not going there. I'm not going to be apologetic for the history because men are imperfect. Men." Women, human beings, we are here to learn and to grow and to become more like our Heavenly Father. To become more like Christ. And um, for people to say, well, the beginning days of the, the early days of the Mormon church did all these things. And it's like, that... I mean, let's just look at Christianity from the beginning. Let's look at the world from the beginning. Let's look at Cain and Abel. I mean, from the beginning, let's just look at what men do. That does not change who Jesus Christ is. And something so simple that the Bible will say, by their fruits, you will know them. And that's so simple. <laughs> it's just... So plain and simple. And all God has to work with is like through people like us. And like many, truly. Through me. I mean, <laughs> we are all he has to work through, you know? Yeah. And so Who am I to But uh, he does. And he really does use the weak people. <laughs> like, you know, the people you would never expect. And the thing about it too is that this life, it's like, you know, you said something about like why is God allowing all this suffering and, and all this pain and stuff? It's like we are we're under a world of law. Like everything that we do, there is a law, you know, that governs it. And so if we make a choice, there is a law. There's going to be a consequence, whether that consequence is positive or negative. There's something is going to happen. And so, who are we to blame God? I mean, because he also lives by these laws. I mean, law is just law. God is law. And we create suffering. He does not create suffering. There's just law, you know? And he does everything that he can in his power and the way that he works to help us, you know, to help bring people into our lives to help us, you know, to, to show us miracles, to give us miracles. I mean, miracles are happening all around us at all times. And it's just a matter of us opening our eyes and being able to see them and allow them into our lives and allow people into our lives to help us so that we don't have to suffer so much, but we create our own suffering. That's what happens with that. Yeah. And he loves us so much that he gave us his, his only son. Yeah. Allowed us to kill him. And um, that's that's who God is. God is love. And uh, I know he loves us so much. <laughs> he yes. does. And our own expectations that we put on ourselves. And our own struggle with our own weaknesses and yeah. I just have to be better. I'm going to be damned. No, you're not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I know. God just loves me. And I, it was so clear in my mind yesterday that it's just okay. <laughs> it's just okay. You yeah. know, I, I'm not the, the one thing I'm responsible are for my actions and for what I do from here forward and everybody's going to be okay. He's working in their lives the same way that he's working in mine. Mm -hmm. And they're experiencing what they need to experience the same way that I'm experiencing what I need to experience. And I don't need to put my head down and be depressed. It's just not necessary to beat myself up. So, life is good. Um chemical imbalances and all and recovery it's just part of it mm -hmm. but I know that we can say all things are possible in Christ and it's uh, it was just such a beautiful experience for me to be brought back to just how simple God's plan is he wants us all 
And he's got us all because he sacrificed his son so that we would all be okay. So, forgiveness is such a wonderful thing and it's a matter of forgiving ourselves and just letting go, giving it to God and saying, what's the next right thing I can do? What's the next thing I can do that, that you would have me do? Life is good. It is. <laughs> In all of it. Yeah. The pain, the suffering, all of it. Yeah. It's all for our Because growth. it's just all so purposeful. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's all got a purpose. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Your neck pain has been in my neck. <laughs> I've been having neck pain. <laughs> it's amazing. It really is, I know. Yeah. Life is good. I love y'all. Bye, y'all.